Thank you for joining me today. We've been in the book of Romans and now we're going to move on into 1 Corinthians. And we will be talking about love again in these. Now there's a lot of scriptures, so we'll be sinking our teeth into love bites, okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians 4.21 What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod? Or in love? And in the spirit of meekness? Paul is getting ready to visit the followers. He says it in verse um, 14, he says, when he comes, what do they want him to do? What will ye? Do you want me to come to you and shame you and to warn you to, uh, shall I come unto you with a rod? Do you want to be disciplined? Um, or do you want me to come to you in love and in the spirit of meekness? There's a time to confront followers of Christ, our brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ. And um, so before he comes, he's warning them to ask them, how do you want me to come to you? Do you want to hear good? things from me and to be encouraged or do you need to be disciplined with the rod so as believers i think we need to really think about that aspect of admonishing one another in the spirit of love okay let's move on to first corinthians 8 verse 1 now is touching things offered unto idols we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. Charity here is used in place of love. And I have underlined edifieth here. Edifieth means to build up, obviously. You know, if you're edifying someone, you're gonna build them up. It also means restores. When you are building up, you are, you're in the process of restoring and repairing something. When we promote and edify, we are, we are, and building up, we are growing in Christian wisdom, hopefully, and affection, and promoting grace and virtue and holiness and blessedness. Those are all words that go along with building each other up and promoting this grace, this virtue, holiness, and blessedness. We are to promote that with each other. So what does that have to do with touching things offered unto idols? Here he's saying we all have knowledge. What kind of knowledge is he referring to here? Well, the background story here was the belief by some Corinthians that images carried shadows of one of the one represented. That they would be eating and drinking in the shadows of images, having a weak conscience. Now the Corinthians totally objected to everything knowingly used in idolatrous services and abhorred the use of that meat. As for the knowledge, some accepted that the knowledge of Christ's sacrifice was sufficient and there was liberty to eat such meat and were not being bound by Jewish rites and laws and ceremonies. But even though they had this knowledge, Paul says love is better, is a better action of building up even above knowing that there was liberty to eat the meat. So we shouldn't look down on those who don't have the knowledge. This freedom has everything to do with freedoms that we have in Christ Jesus. Once you have accepted him, we are free. Um, not free to abuse our freedoms that I'll get to in a moment, but we are free. 
knowing that there is only one God. The Corinthians and this meat that they were offering to the idols had certain belief systems that they were bound to. But as people accepted Christ, there was no reason to, uh, as some believed, they had freedom to eat the meat that was offered to idols because there was only one true God and they understood that, they had knowledge of that. There were others that weren't strong in their faith and it was an issue for them. They needed to be taught more and they needed to have greater understanding that they had freedom in Christ. And so Paul is saying here, let's not look down on these new believers who have still have issues over eating this meat and prefer them consider their their weakness their lack of understanding and prefer them and this is another way of showing love to each other giving up things that we know are okay because of the freedoms we have but considering others higher than we consider ourselves. That's love. Love builds up. Are we willing to lay down our rights as a loving gesture, whatever it may be? May we begin to see the importance of loving each other enough to be being willing to lay down our rights in love of others, which would be a holy and acceptable loving action in the sight of the Lord God.